Hi, my name is Dieter Saros and I'm going to tell you a bit more about fortifying ICS uh, environments by applying hardening and by performing security testing on those environments or on those hardened environments. Um, first, a little bit things about me. I'm active within uh, information security since 1998 and uh, within ICS security since uh, almost uh, 2008. So mainly I'm doing uh, or challenging ICS vendor solutions uh, to verify cybersecurity settings. And I'm also assisting in performing security FAT and SAT testing uh, for those vendors or for my end customers. Uh, I'm also uh, assisting end customers by applying hardening to those environments or applying uh, hardening to the vendor solutions uh, they bought or they have. Now, a little bit more about fortifying ICS systems. System. So it's also known as hardening, of course. It's actually the process in which the balance between usability and security of a system is researched and enforced. So why would you think of doing hardening on ICS systems? First of all, well, the more the systems are interconnected, the more uh, there are potentially attack factors of those systems. So hardening is the process in which we can try to reduce the attack factors of those systems uh, we can try to reinforce the exposed systems if there are any, and also um, securing remote access or limiting uh, user access or uh, verifying or uh, making uh, operator jail protections uh, more foolproof so that they cannot escape from the operator jails in question. Um, when would you do hardening? Well, uh, during projects, of course, when there's new systems applied or when there's refurbished systems um, into the environment or when you're upgrading or applying or installing uh, a new software component or hardware component to the environment. Uh, most of the times, if you cannot do it during projects, you can try to do it at the next maintenance stop, but uh, then you'll probably have to have done some hardening verification before that um, as most of the times the next maintenance stops are sometimes too limited to perform the uh, proper hardening and testing of the hard environment. Another reason why would you or when you do hardening is to close identified security weaknesses. So if you perform security testing within your environment, you often, uh, almost always, you often find uh, security weaknesses. Um, to close those identified security weaknesses, sometimes patching can be insufficient or not possible. Then that's the time when you would apply hardening to those systems as well. How would you do hardening, of course? Well, performing hardening can, can be done in, in three big different ways. So manually, first applying every single setting manually, so changing register keys, uh, removing software, uh, applying other settings to your system, or you can create scripts uh, to do so to assist you in doing the hardening, or you can use group policies. That can be either local group policies or uh, central uh, control group policies if you have, for example, an active directory. So that's the, the main difference between domain joint systems and non-domain joint systems. Uh, but in both occasions, you can use group policies either locally or uh, centrally. Um, and a big question now is how not to perform hardening. Well, actually, hardening is not a click and play configuration. So uh, you cannot just take a script, run it, and hope that everything still uh, will work. Um, that's something that um, some of the vendors I've been working with during hiring processes are doing it wrong. They just take the scripts that were published uh, for a certain hardening guideline, but they didn't look at any uh, setting within the hardening guideline, so they failed to understand what settings were applied uh, or going to be applied by using the script. So uh, an example here is that um, a hardening guideline I created for one of my customers um, was for a completely isolated system and the vendor uh, was applied to that hardening guideline and the accompanying script, but uh, that was for a, a connected system. So he applied the completely isolated hardening script to the connected system resulting in a loss of connection of that system. So that's why I mentioned hardening is certainly not a click and play configuration uh, type approach. That sometimes works, but in most cases you run into problems. Um, before we continue further, you should ask yourself your question. So what is your actual hardening strategy? Uh, so what systems or environments will you harden? And what systems or environments will you harden first? So those are questions that need to be answered before you dig into the further hardening process. 
There's also a list of potential problems that you can run into during the hardening. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong. For example, the whole list here is no more access to user interfaces, no more access to file shares, printers. So no more access to file shares is actually one of the most um, occurring issues uh, that, that run into during hardening because, well, they want to have file shares, of course. Um, HMI applications can stop working or your system application can crash. Even sometimes you can run into uh, domain-wide problems. So the domain can get down or something like that. Um, another thing that to keep in mind is that time, difference, time differences between systems uh, need to be sorted out properly as well. Uh, certainly if you're, uh, if you're using ICS applications or HMI applications, uh, the time need to be almost yeah, completely the same actually uh, to prevent information and data loss. Um, you can lose touchscreen functionality if you disable the the, the touchscreen uh, functions in the operating system, of course, and operators can lose access. Um, so the whole list of things that can go wrong is well, the key is here that you should solve that problem, that particular ident uh, isolated problem, or you should revert to a known good state before uh, you start applying the hardening. Um, sometimes you have to live with some settings that uh, are not as strong as they should be uh, for a particular environment. So sometimes you just can't do anything else uh, by accepting those settings. Uh, so what's less like to be hardened? Well, more and more black box systems because, because those are often used as um, guarantee uh, buy-ins or lock-ins. So the vendor lock-in here is uh, can cause guarantee issues if you try to touch or even change settings on a black box system. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. So the, big, the best thing to do then is try to mitigate the potential issues of that black box systems in another way, but we'll come to that later on. Other systems that are less likely to be harmed as um, office clients, because they need to be able to do anything, right? Um, by using legacy systems. Um, it's often the case that people are really reluctant in touching legacy systems, systems because they do not know the system. They cannot predict uh, what's going to happen if they do, if they configure something on the legacy system. Here's the little flow chart that I created um, for potential problems during hardening. So what if you cannot perform the hardening? Well, you have at that stage an insecure system. You cannot do the hardening. So then first thing, uh, thing to check is, can you do an upgrade of the system? If you can do, well, prop, fine. You'll end up with a secure control system. If you cannot upgrade, you might want to look at if you can replace it or not. If you cannot replace it, well, then you have to uh, investigate if you can isolate the system. But if you cannot do anything of those, so no hardening, no upgrading, no replacing, no isolation. Well, the thing is then, uh, what could go wrong? Well, a lot of things can go wrong, of course. So what things would you harm? Uh, you have identified that you want to do harming. You have identified the systems that you want to do harming, when you will do the harming, and why you will do the harming. But now, um, the things that you want to do harming for, so what, uh, you have to define those as well. So actually, all things that could pose a risk to a system are candidates for potential harming. Meaning software, all installed software packages, not only the operating system software, but also additional packages, uh, services. Uh, so it's not only enough to um, stop the service, but it's also key to investigate when uh, it, or if you can uh, disable services so that they cannot start up again after you have uh, launch something else. So account policies, uh, user rights and permission onto the operating system, uh, network interface settings that is very often forgotten about, that uh, a lot of network interfaces keep their default um, bindings, that's more on Windows systems of course, their default interface bindings enabled. Even if they do uh, other style hardening, those bindings are uh, left, uh, left present. Um, remote administration solutions, if there is um, not RDP that's used, often yeah, you have AirAdmin, you have TeamViewer or other uh, solutions out there 
uh, team viewer might not have been the best example that I gave, but let's take a admin. Well, it's often the case that a default a admin installation, it might change already, but default a admin uh, configuration is not always the best uh, configuration for your environment. Also not to forget is peripheral port access. So USB ports, uh, serial ports, whatever ports there are there uh, that are not used uh, should be disabled, of course. Um, if you don't need, for example, USB data storage, you, you should disable USB data storage. If you do not need to install additional USB drivers for keyboard, mouse, or Ethernet dongles, or whatever, disable that possibility, uh, just to prevent uh, people from attaching other USB devices that get rec recognized on the system, that you can uh, get access to the system by using those. Um, operating system access by using operator gels. Um, I gave a talk on that uh, a few years ago in Stockholm, uh, but operator jail escaping is always, almost always possible. Um, but it depends on uh, the service account or the user account the application is running with that will determine your access to the further operating system below. So that's why uh, applications should, first of all, never run as administrator access. For example, WinCC used to need uh, administrator level access. So that was a problem already. Um, but by further protecting the operator jail, so by limiting what the operator can do onto the operating system, will further limit uh, possible attack paths into the system. Now, the hardening process. First of all, you begin with choosing the right operating system for job. Yeah, normally you would have been able to uh, select a good operating system based on what the functionality needs uh, for the system, but very often you are forced into certain operating systems based on what the vendor solution requires. So today this is unfortunately very often Windows-based operating systems, although the last versions are getting more secure, uh, which is good, of course. Um, Using custom operating uh, systems, well, that's a problem when those systems have uh, a lot of functionality embedded, which are not always uh, disabled by default. So that's why we do the harm, right? And of course, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to live with using obsolete operating systems and software. So uh, sometimes you cannot do anything else you, besides just putting the system onto another environment and making sure that uh, nothing else can happen to that system. One thing that you should not forget before doing the hardening is taking backups and of course, testing those backups to make sure that if you have done the hardening and something goes wrong during hardening, you can revert to a known good state, as I showed a few slides before. After you chose your planning system, it's a good thing to analyze the necessary functionality and the current security of the system. Um, if you have an up-to-date operating system, the current security of the system without the application installed should be pretty much okay, uh, but still might need some uh, additional hardening, so additional security settings, depending on the location and the criticality of the system. But as you will introduce pro uh, potential applications, uh, HMI applications, DCS applications, whatever application is required for the functionality of the system, you will have to recheck the uh, functionality and recheck the current security of the system. Recheck the operating system applications, what data flows are required, what services are needed. And then, of course, you can try to, det to determine what can on, or should be hardened. Uh, so this, of course, depends on the identified security issues. If there are any, identify on what's needed for the system. Um, if there's software that is installed, you should check if that software needs to be removed or upgraded before you do any hardening to make sure that you have a, uh, on software aspects and operating system aspects, the last um, updated environment for uh, your, your software set. Then of course, do the hardening. It's often in a trial and error uh, style approach uh, because in most occasions or in a lot of occasions, you will not be able to determine uh, what things or the vendor might not be able to determine exactly what's needed for the hardening and or for the environment and whatnot. Uh, I've been in that situation when I helped Harning uh, for a solution vendor. 
it was done through GPOs and we had to change GPOs, I think five or six times because the vendor even didn't know his environment properly. Um, after you do the hardening, after everything is running, first thing is of course, verifying the functionality of the system, making sure that everything is running properly, is working properly. But then it's also key to verify residual risks of the systems after you have applied a hardening to making sure that um, after hardening, the system is good, is secure, or as secure as possible, and uh, try to identify what you can do with those remaining risks uh, after the hardening. A big thing to understand is that whenever there's major system changes uh, to the hardened system, you have to verify if you do not have to reapply hardening uh, after that, because in a lot of uh, occasions, uh, installing patches, installing uh, operating system patches or application upgrades. Some settings might do, uh, have to be reapplied or might have to be added to the hardening set uh, to make sure that the known secure state stays uh, as secure as possible. Sometimes, of course, it's necessary to revert changes. If the HMI or the DCS or the hardened systems run into problems or something doesn't work and you cannot solve it, uh, by just changing one single setting in the hardening, you might have to restore uh, or revert changes. So there's a few options there. First, restoring the image. Well, that's a full recovery, so there's no more hardening uh, present on the system. The second choice is restoring a snapshot. This will only do a full or partial recovery, depending on the uh, applications that are installed. Um, and it also depends on when the snapshot was taken. Of course, for the image, uh, restoring the image, it also depends when the image was taken. And you can, as a third option, uh, choose to restore only some saved settings. That's only a partial recovery and a, a partial hardening remains, of course. Um, in this case, if you need to restore or revert changes, it's important to verify the or re-verify the analysis phase to make sure that you haven't missed anything to so to be able to restart the hardening if you're allowed to from your uh, customer or uh, vendor position line. Um, this slide shows you some uh, indicators in the IEC 62443 uh, in where hardening is mentioned. First of all, in the dash two dash one, of course, in the dash two dash four, because that talks about uh, requirements for I IACS suppliers. And of course, during system and component, there's also a mentioning of hardening um, for having a secured installation. Now, uh, this was the hardening part. Um, we can also fortify ICS systems by performing security testing, by knowing your weaknesses. And then, of course, depending that we can do hardening uh, after knowing those weaknesses or not. Fortifying by testing is, first of all, verification of what needs to be hardened before doing a hardening, Verifica verification of what has been hardened after hardening, of course, and identification of any other security issues and residual risks. So you can do that by doing regular cybersecurity testing, if you're allowed within your environment, of course, or by doing cybersecurity FATA sub testing in uh, projects. Actually, cybersecurity FAT testing is one of the few uh, times in, the, in an ICS environment where you can do when you can go all the way with your security testing because it's in an isolated test environment and then you can do full-blown cybersecurity testing at will. So cybersecurity FATSA testing is the cybersecurity validation of new upgraded systems, new or upgraded systems and solutions within your environment. Why do we, would you ever do cybersecurity testing within, or, um, within ICS environments? First of all, as I said already, verifying cybersecurity. Second one is a verifying compliance to cybersecurity uh, or project or user requirements, but you should not stop there because by doing testing, you also at the same time create awareness with your vendors, operators, with INC people, and you are making sure that most cybersecurity issues are known um, and are candidates to be solved before you go into commissioning. So cybersecurity testing together with hardening together with FAT and SAT cyber testing will gradually increase your security within your environment. When would you do cybersecurity testing? Well, for every new system or solution, for every updated system or solution, of course, during project FAT SAT testing cycles in which you have certainly new systems or updated systems at, uh, certainly, 
or during regular cybersecurity evaluations if you're allowed within your environment. So this is a timeline in which the requirements for testing and um, residual risk determination is, uh, is shown. Um, hopefully within projects at your uh, organization or your customers, they set cybersecurity requirements, uh, cybersecurity requirements up front within, during procurement together with the doing a risk assessment to identify uh, potential risks to your environment before running into cybersecurity FAT and SAT testing. Um, I put cybersecurity FAT SAT testing on the construction phase because actually that's at the vendor site um, during construction, during test environment. Um, you can choose to do that before, during or after functional, uh, cyber, uh, functional FAT testing. And the same with uh, the SAT testing, cybersecurity SAT testing, that's during commissioning, and you can choose to do so before, during, or after uh, functional SAT testing. Um, it is sometimes very interesting to do functional testing and cybersecurity testing during FAT or SAT at the same time, because then uh, operators, INC people, even a vendor will see how the system reacts um, on the cybersecurity testing. Uh, events uh, during a real uh, scenario. What should you test and verify? Well, first of all, everything on a network, everything on a system, everything on the physical side, and everything on the application side. That's in a nutshell. But on the network, you have the ports, network vulnerabilities, traffic encryption, is firewalls used. On the system, you have system vulnerabilities, configuration issues, not only in the operating system, but also for additionally installed applications. You also have system physical security and so on and so on. So you have the list, complete list there. Um, the main thing is that hardening, hardening baselines or hardening guidelines, if there are any, should be used to verify against, uh, should be used to test against, but you should not stop um, there. You should verify if those hardening guidelines and security testing checklists should not be updated with specific test requirements specific project information or uh, vendor specifications. So your standard checklist should be updated regularly. And you should not forget that you should verify logical, physical and human aspects uh, of the uh, to be tested environment. Do note that um, testing of hardened systems might require temporarily reverting certain settings. Uh, if you, for example, do hardening on Windows systems, some things that you will certainly do is uh, disabling the remote registry service. If you disable the bindings on the on the interfaces and you uh, enable the firewall and so on and so on, those are all things, typical things that you might have to uh, temporarily disable or um, deactivate before being able to do uh, some authenticated uh, vulnerability scanning on systems, depending on the vulnerability scanner that is used, of course. Um, another thing that's important next to the hardening uh, strategy is creating a cybersecurity testing strategy. So cybersecurity testing should be embedded, embedded within quality assurance processes. Cybersecurity testing should also be embedded within project uh, processes. So regular testing, uh, FATSA testing, um, those are all things that uh, are important to keep in mind, but also having some own testing equipment or advisory emulation um, solutions at hand to be sure that um, you are able to test everything. If you don't have that capability, you can always outsource that capability to trusted parties, of course. But you should always include logical, human and physical elements within cybersecurity testing and play the what-if game. So what happens if I plug in my USB to Ethernet dongle, for example? What happens? When I click on this button, when you do operator geoprotection protection uh, checks and all that kind of what if questions uh, can pop in your, into your mind when doing testing on or when trying to define uh, hardings and uh, testing strategies. And last but not least uh, is the cybersecurity FATSAT reporting. So security assessments is nothing with it, uh, without uh, a decent cybersecurity test result report. But here in this uh, story, in the fortifying ICS uh, story, you should use the cybersecurity test results to adapt your hardening strategy and in the end also your testing strategy to make sure that you are able to cover everything. 
So thank you for your uh, interest. And uh, should you have other questions on this topic, you can always reach me out, reach out to me on the, the mentioned information on this slide. Thank you. Talk to you later.